Hello, this is AME1 Hunter, Knox Houston Training Operations Department LPO, and we're going to be going over doing the DTS authorization, booking flights, and the rental car. The first thing you want to do is mouse over official travel and then click on authorization orders. Once your orders have been fund approved and in rows, you can go in here and edit your trip and book your reservations. As you can see, all of the trips are sorted by departure date. So we're going to edit this trip. We're going to fly out to Norfolk, Virginia. So we're going to click on edit. The preview trip screen opens, giving you a brief preview of the trip. The next thing you want to do is click on additional options. Once the additional option screen opens, you can update your personal information, your address, your phone number. It's okay to use a cell phone number. You can use a cell phone, uh, whatever is the best means of contact to get in contact with you. Um, your email address, you can use a personal email, that's okay. Yahoo, Hotmail, Gmail, whichever you prefer, because that's where your itinerary is going to go to. If you have a Navy email in there and you don't check your Navy email that often, go ahead and take that out and put your personal email in there. Then you want to scroll down the screen. Once you've updated all of your personal info, Click the link that says save changes to permanent traveler information and then click update personal information. Once you have done that, you want to click on the link that says my account information and enter your government travel card number and expiration date. And ensure your checking account and or savings account info is correct. Then click the link that says save changes to permanent traveler information. And then you want to click on update personal information. Once you've updated your info, you can click on the travel tab. The trip summary screen opens. You want to click on add new flight. And then the departure airport and arrival airport should already be in there. If not, you can type it in there. Only the three-letter airport code is required. The departure or, or arrival tab drop-down is the time that you want to depart or the time you want to arrive at your destination. So we're leaving on September the 10th. And we're going to select the time that we're going to leave. It's 1 p.m. We're going to hit search. If there is a GSA contract airfare available, you have to select one of those. Otherwise, you're going to have to give a justification to your authorizing official prior to your flights getting booked. But... On this flight, they don't have a they don't have a GSA contract airfare for this time that we're trying to leave, so we can use the other government airfare for this flight. So we're gonna go ahead and click select flight. Not all airlines have seat maps available. If not, we're gonna click no preference. Click done. No preference again. Click done. All right, now we have our outbound flight in here. So now I want to click add new flight. 
and this is unique to the reserve travel you have to go ahead and manually type the locations in so we're departing ORF going back to IAH leaving Norfolk going back to Houston then I'm going to click on imported document and we're flying out on the 25th so I'm going to change the date to the 25th and I want to leave out at 7 a.m. hit search as you can see they have a GSA contract airfare for this flight so I'm going to go ahead and select this flight as you can see we have a dark blue link that's available these flights this flight has a uh, seat that you can select on here so I'm gonna go ahead and select this seat I want to sit in 14D click done and this one I want to sit in 36F so I'm gonna select that and hit done alright now you see we have our flights going out to the location and coming back so now we're going to hit add new rental car pick up date drop off date the time you can refer right here to the reservation summary if you forget what flight you put in so we're arriving in Norfolk at uh, 6 28 p.m. so we'll pick the rental car up about 7 p.m. on the 10th and we fly out at 7.06 a.m. so we're gonna drop the rental car off at about 6 a.m. make sure the airport is in here to pick up airport where you want to pick the car up at click search Alright, then we're going to scroll down. You have to select the cheapest rental car. Otherwise, you're going to have to type in a justification to your approving official why you didn't select the cheapest rental car. And you can see the price right here, $337.20, All right. Now we have our rental car and airfare, air, airline tickets in there. We have requested those flights and the rental car. We want to hit save and continue. This gives the uh, final trip itinerary screen. From here you can email this to yourself. Click email this itinerary and email it or you can print it. The next thing we want to do is click on expenses. You get a pop-up window saying your confirmed travel reservations will be canceled in 24 hours if your authorization remains unsigned. Then you get another pop-up saying the travel authorization must be stamped signed from the digital signature screen to transmit reservation changes to the CTO. This trip will not route and cannot be approved until signed but we're going to sign it right now. <clears throat> the expense screen opens up. This is where you're going to estimate how much gas you're going to use, if you uh, anticipate having any taxes or anything, any tolls. So we're going to hit the drop-down menu. As you can see, we have all of these expenses in here. So we're going to select gasoline, rental car, gov car, government car. And we're going to estimate the cost at being $100 for gas. If you have any more expenses that you think you're going to occur, you can put them in a drop down and go ahead and uh, scroll down to the bottom and hit save expenses. 
then you want to click on the mileage tab. The mileage tab is where you can put your mileage from driving your personal car to the airport and back. If you take a taxi, then you can't use mileage because obviously you're not driving your car and you put it in non-mileage and claim taxi to terminal. Then you want to open the per diem entitlement screen. This screen is where you see your per diem entitlements. Here you see your lodging cost per night is at $55. Because you're going to Norfolk, Virginia, you have to call the barracks because they have a BEQ. And you have to try to make reservations at the BEQ. If not, then you can stay out in town and get a government rate not exceeding $92 a day, which is the government rate allowed for that location. But in order to go out in town, you have to have a certificate of non-availability, otherwise known as CNA, to do that. So we're going to click Edit All on the bottom. If we already have a CNA, we're going to change the $55 to $92. This is the cost per night also in the lodging where you would uh, input the $92. And you scroll down to the bottom and hit save these entitlements. As, as you can see, it's changed to $92 a night. The next thing we're going to do is review and sign it. The preview trip screen opens again. Other authorizations. Pre-audit. Sometimes this comes up saying default payment method not selected for lodging. And you can just type in there lodging not book. Possible excessive expense, uh, estimated expense. If you get a red flag and you don't know what it means, just type in, don't know what this means. The reviewing official and the approving official will contact you if they have any issues with your authorization or anything that you're trying to claim in DTS. So you want to save and proceed to digital signature. You want to make sure you're submitting a document as signed. Not Houston Cell Res. If you want to type in any remarks to the reviewing and approving official, you can type it in here. And then submit completed document. Your signature is going to be processed. You may or may not have to put your PIN number in. As you can see, it's the status of the document is CTO submit. That means that it's going to the commercial travel office and they're going to book your flights. The next status is going to be CTO book. They have 24 hours to book your flight after you submit, submit it to the CTO. Um, your tickets will be paid for no later than 72 business hours prior to you leaving. You can call the airline and verify that your, your flights are paid for prior to getting to the airport. Uh, if you have any questions, contact myself or contact Seaman Outlaw for further assistance. Thank you.